empty. I'm very saddened, like ever right-thinking Nigerian, ever Nigerian with a beating heart should be. I truly am very saddened. It's never happened in this country that within 10 days, up to 700 people were abducted. 400 in Borno, 287 students, primary and secondary students, as young as eight and as old as 12. And then the Islamia students in, in, in Sokoto, 15 years of Boko Haram, nine years of banditry. Are we going to continue this forever? It's going to be a forever war. We are all here in Abuja. Our children in the villages have been taken away. Our women in the villages have been raped. Our farmers cannot go into the, in, 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 to their farms. Did you guys see the primary school of Koriga? My friends in the United States come, come calling me and say, did you see the primary school where these kids were taken? Blow roof, nothing, nothing there. Well, this is the leadership of the North that fuels all of this. Please help us. We beg you in the name of God. Where is our president? Where is our governor? Please don't let them take them away from us. Please follow them to the forest and rescue our loved ones. In some families, seven members were kidnapped. Another five were taken. It has never happened over 700 people abducted within a week. In Chibok, Boko Haram abducted 276. But here in Kaduna, Koriga, there's 287, broad daylight. After they had assembly, this terrorist came into the village on motorcycles, hundreds of motorcycles, surrounded the school and took these children. Those that could walk, walk. Those that could, they could hold on the motorcycle, they did. Parents in the village were seeing their children taken away and carted into the forest. You mean, the question to ask is, we are talking over a hundred motorcycles coming in. Nobody saw them. Where were the drones? The same drones that dropped ordinance on Tudumbiri. Where was the intelligence? That nobody could see them coming and they took away our children. Parents were watching them into the forest. And we are all parents. I mean, this is failure of us as parents, failure of us as leaders, failure of government. The primary responsibility of government is one on one alone, to protect its people and its welfare. So the military will do very well not giving excuses. This is the same thing we had from the spokesman of President Muhammad Buhari, remember, after rice farmers were slaughtered in Zabarmari, Borno State. He came out and said it was the fault of, of the farmers because they did not inform the military. So the military at times like this, for goodness sake, you did the same thing after Tudumbiri, don't do that again. There was a failure, you're going to correct it. And you must get your house in order. It's not only the military. Why is the DSS? Why is the police? Everything military, military, military. There is not a single police station in that village. In that village. We expect the military to be everywhere to do everything. This is clear failure of intelligence. Clear failure of intelligence. And the military, please, please, please stop giving excuses for all of this. This is inexcusable. Things have happened. Tell Nigerians how you're going to get this, their, their children out. Tell Nigerians how you get their mothers and sisters and grandmothers out. Tell Nigerians how you get those children from, from Sokoto out. Instead of giving excuses, excuses do nothing but irritate Nigerians. We are not in the best of mood. People are suffering. People are hardly having anything to eat. We're in the period of Ramadan, praying. Things like this happen, people are prayerful not only for themselves, for the children, for our security forces, and for all the gallant things they do. Excuses help nobody and they make us uh, not happy. But this is a failure, just like President Muhammad Buhari must take responsibility for all the things that happened during his time. This government must too. 
This is coming 10 years after Chibok. Chibok happened in April 2014. So 2024, almost 10 years to the date, we are having the same thing. So we haven't learned anything over the last 10 years. We've had safe school initiatives only by mouth. The world is watching us. Professor, the world is watching. Professor Osman, um... The Financial Times in the scathing editorial said these kidnappings are just uh, signs of a failing state. This is not good for us as a country, for us as a people. I have friends all over the world, Qatari friends, friends from Dubai all over the world calling me yesterday and saying, Usman, what is happening? How can any foreign investor come to Nigeria when we are still terrorists, are still cutting our children into the forest? Where is our humanity as a people? Where is the government? The military is overdoing things, overtaking responsibility. Where is everybody else? Where is everybody else? So, the primary thing to do now is to find a way to get these children out. We will have a time when we we'll start blaming whoever needs to be blamed. And you don't get these children out by going and blasting everybody and killing them. The military knows that and the military has been. And I will commend the military for this. Since Boko Haram, since, since Chibok, the military has been consistent and mature and compassionate enough in whatever operation they do to rescue hostages, they don't go there recklessly to kill people. Like I hear some pundits advocating. So the military is mature enough, has had enough experience to know how to get this, our children out with the help of all other security services. And that is our prayer. The primary thing now is to identify who are these bad guys. What are their motives, if any? Where are they located? And how do we get to them? And I call on the government and all pundits, especially those that speak Hausa on, on, on radio and television, to dial down. Whatever we say, these bad guys hear us. Now is not the time for making noise, but time for quiet action to get everybody out. From the 400 women taken from Borno to the 287 children taken from Koriga and from the uh, children taken from Gada local government. But this is a very sad moment for the whole country. And our prayer is that these children get out of uh, captivity and these women get rescued without any loss of life. We have to, all of us, we have to get involved and see how we can bring peace to our land. Nobody can bring peace to us. And at this moment, I have to, uh, I have to appeal to our northern leadership. We have had a northern president from Katsina for eight years. Before he came, we did not have a single IDP. All our local governments were safe. Now, Kazana State, 22 out of 34 local governments. That is 65% of Kazana is under siege. Borno State is more secure and safer than Kazana. That we had a president who is from there. That is a failing of us northerners. We need to look at ourselves. And now here we are. We have a leadership. We have a vice president number two who is from the north. We have a Speaker of the House who is number f number three, number four, who is from the north. We have an SGF who, who is from the north. We have the, 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 the senior most military officer who is from the north. We have uh, all the ministers of defense from the north. We have the minister of police from the north. We have the national security advisor from the north. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will look at us and say, you guys have no excuse not to bring peace to your land. So it is up to us to look at ourselves in the mirror. We Northerners, especially those in government, and lock the door and say, people, how do we take care of these problems? President Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the Southwest cannot come and bring peace to us. It is us that must bring peace to ourselves. And it is not the military that will bring peace. I've said it again and again, banditry can never be won on the battlefield. We are just putting the military to clean up after this mess. They're everywhere. So Northern leadership, all of us, must come in, lock the door and sit down and see how we can bring peace to our land. 
15 years of Boko Haram, nine years of banditry. Are we going to continue this forever? It's going to be a forever war. We are all here in Abuja. Our children in the villages are being taken away. Our women in the villages are being raped. Our farmers cannot go into the, in, 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 to their farms. Did you guys see the primary school of Koriga? My friends in the United States come, come calling me and say, did you see the primary school where these kids were taken? Blow roof, nothing, nothing there. Well, this is the leadership of the North that fuels all of this. And we're looking elsewhere, we are blaming somebody else. No. Leaders of the North, those in government and out of government, it's time for us to look ourselves in the face and say, we have failed our people, we need to do better. The military cannot bring peace to ourselves. None. We must all get involved and stop this nonsense, this boko haram, this, this banditry that has pauperized our people, that has pillaged our, our land, our people cannot go to farm and we're expecting the military to th throw drones and bring peace to us. No, it is us that will bring peace to ourselves. And that is what Sheikh Gumi is saying. We have to all get involved, look at the global peace and see how we can bring peace to ourselves. Peace will never come from Abuja or the military has to come from us, we the people that live there. And those in government, you're in government for a purpose. You're not in government to be going around in Abuja in big black SUVs and overstarched with burrigas. Bring peace to your land, yes. for goodness sake.